CRA meeting to order now. It's October 13th at uh, 1.32. We were waiting for Commissioner Cal Allen, but he'll, he'll be here shortly. Um, so first we'll stand for the invitation and then we'll have the pledge of allegiance. Right. Thank you. <coughs> Father, we thank you today for the many, many ways you continue to work in our lives. We ask that you guide this board as we work through our agenda. Help us all come together to make the best choices for the redevelopment of Carabell. Please be with our consultants and staff members as they work with us to find the best solutions for our projects. And just be with everyone here to, today throughout this meeting. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. and Bo may receive the email with the meeting guidelines. I'm sure you understand that. But we all just want to make sure that everyone gets the opportunity to speak and speak well into the microphone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And then I just want to explain to uh, Commissioner Walden, our new member here on the board, uh, that um, the CRA board is different than our commission board. We're not a governing board when we sit as the CRA board. We're more of a redevelopment plan. And uh, when, when the governing board sits as the CRA board, Community Redevelopment Agency, the governing board can appoint two additional members, which we did two, almost two years ago, not quite two years ago, Mr. Rob Powell and Mr. Bo May. They are property owners and stakeholder members uh, in the CRA district, and they help to give a better representation of the CRA district. They represent the, you know, the people from, the property owners from that district. And they help to uh, distinguish this board as a separate, distinct, separate board from the governing board and commission. Okay. All right. And so then our uh, uh, Ms. Courtney has some reports for us. Thank you. Um, our Riverwalk condos grant is still open. I've given them an extension. Uh, they have so much work that they're doing. The scope of work on that project is far beyond what we've seen on any other project but they are working on it. They have signed a contract with their contractor. Um, Gander's Hardware, everything's been closed down except for the fence project. I've seen they've put up the new fence, but she hasn't submitted the invoices for reimbursement yet. Uh, repair at Veterans Memorial Wall. Our bricks, the last of the bricks we were waiting on arrived last Thursday. So we'll be scheduling for Mr. Jones to come from Appalachia to put those up. Um, I'm waiting on a quote for a new sitting bench for the 12th Street Fishing Pier from um, Oxendine Construction. And I have called Adam Fielder Landscaping, who installed the original landscape on Highway 98, to get a quote to replace the palm tree between 10th Street and 9th Street. That's dead. And then I didn't have this on, a, on the agenda, but the city usually does a thousand dollars in advertising for the seafood festival and this year we were thinking about doing 500 from the city and 500 from the CRA if that's okay with everybody what do you all think about that um, they would have that on their t-shirts and they, their, they their put signs. the signs on the gates and we would have Carabell CRA Are yes, ready to get started? yes sir we started no, we missed what I said <laughs> uh, Mr. Harper, do we need 
I'm sorry, Yes. Okay. Would someone like to Would someone like to uh, motion then for five hundred dollars for advertising for the CRA? Uh, for the seafood festival? I think that sounds good. Good exposure and uh, it helps us carry the load for the uh, cost of the advertising. That was a good idea. Well, we, we need a motion then. I'll make a motion. We contribute uh, half to our $500 towards the $1,000 that the city would pay for the you know, promotion of the secret festival. I second the motion. All right. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any, anyone opposed? Okay. Then the motion carries. Motion by uh, Mr. Bellamy, second by Rob House. Okay. And then uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the, some of the safety issues on the waterfront dock have been addressed. Uh, the Streets and Roads and Parks Department was out there this morning and they've done some very short-term repairs until we can get that uh, replaced. And then uh, follow up on the uh, Blue Star Highway sign, Mr. Uh, Fred Amon is here. If you'd like to come forward and speak, um, does he need a speaker, a microphone out there? Yeah. Is in need of repair over on the bottom. It needs to be repainted. The sign is fine. The only uh, I, I'm working in conjunction with Mike Marshall's Marine, and he has the equipment and he can furnish the paint and uh, he has to know how to put the proper paint applied. Now, what I will do is help him with it as far as the lettering, the gold lettering. And uh, the only thing that would we require at this point is have the town remove the sign from the post and deliver it to Marshall's Marine. And whenever Mike uh, gets all the base coating done, the sandblasting and the finishing, then I'll do the, the, gold, the gold finish on the lettering. So it shouldn't be a big deal. I'll donate my time, but Mike, Mike can't do it because he's in business. All right. And then, and then when it's finished, let us know and we'll pick it up and deliver it back to its sure. location. Sure. And Pleasure. then you wanted, uh, maybe Greg could do the research since it was his idea in the first place or suggestion to have it repaired to find out what color, the original color on that signage, that olive color. Yeah, if, if you have a, a color photograph of the original, it would help. Okay. Because uh, the sun fades the colors pretty much, but we can get it close okay. if You'll, you don't have it. I can, can get do that, that Greg? So, yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, I would like to request on the minutes if uh, we would put in, a t since we don't have a list like we do on our commission meeting of the commissioner's reports, if you would just put uh, at the beginning of the minutes of the board members that are in attendance. Okay. Thank you so much. And, um, okay, and Mr. Dan Harkin, do you have um, a report for us? I do. The, um, what we've got before you all today is the, um, we've received the um, offer or the, a, a contract on the Millinder's site there that we talked about at the last meeting. Um, purchase price of $185,000, an amount to be held in escrow to provide for demolition and, and removal and disposal of the structures that are out there now. And what we have to do here at this meeting is and you also know that you what you've got is an addendum in front of you that, that elaborates on the additional terms of the contract which include the uh, one is an, is an environmental exclusion if, if we go out there and find an underground storage tank or something that the city just can't you know, the CRA can't get into environmentally then that is a contingency in the contract um, it's not expected but just need to that in there and then the second piece of the addendum <coughs> relates to debris removal and just goes through how that would work which is that $35,000 will be held back at closing and after closing 
the the sellers will have 45 days to provide the site um, to our engineers satisfaction that's been cleared level and it doesn't have to be fully compacted but just lightly compacted and all the debris hauled off um, it provides for what happens obviously if they accomplish that great if, if, they, if they fail to accomplish it that we will have the right to complete the work ourselves and use the money held in escrow for that purpose if they complete it to our satisfaction we release the money to them um, or directly to the contractor it's up, really up to them um, and it also talks about the right-of-way abandonment um, which will occur um, immediately following um, it, that's a city commission function but would be following the acquisition of the property by the city so or by the CRA once the CRA has title to it then this would be the city's responsibility to abandon Kelsey court and change the direction on um, on the right of way there on um, Avenue, Avenue F Southeast Avenue F um, and what I ask the board to do would be to discuss and also Jalen's here um, representing the sellers um, if she has any input the way this would work is that we would either approve or disapprove the contract with the attached addendum we would designate someone to sign it on behalf of the, the CRA board that would go to the millinders they would have the right to either execute the contract and if they do that we're under contract moving towards closing if they have a counter offer then that will come back to us at the November 5 uh, there's a November 5th Commission meeting and we've reserved a spot for a special CRA meeting if we need one to consider any sort of um, counter offer if they have one um, and certainly you all can bounce any questions off me um, again the way we do this would be for everybody to have any input on the addendum or the contract so that we can get it signed and back to Janelin um, and then it's up to her clients to, to execute or give us a counter offer also we want to make a finding of, of just some factors because we are paying over appraised value for this property we need to justify that and um, I can lay out some factors that we've talked about and for consideration and, and for inclusion in the motion if, if there's a motion to approve it all I can help construct it thank you um, First of all, Mr. Allen, Cal, excuse me, Commissioner Allen. No, Cal. <laughs> okay. Do you have a copy of the of this event? I, want to make I sure. do. I think I have it at the house. Okay. Cool. Is there is there one out there, Courtney? Or is there no, I didn't. I didn't bring any. Want to make sure everybody's got one in front. Of you. <coughs> okay. Thank you. And you have one, don't you? No, ma'am. Oh, okay. And then Miss Chandler. Forward to. You've been able to review this. Okay. Um, yes, I have um, reviewed the addendum with the sellers, and they're in agreement with all the language. Everything is good. Um, the one thing they wanted to specify is they will not start uh, demolition until the day of closing. I have to close the closing December 15th, so I think we need to move that closing on up so that we can go forward. And the 45 days is they were very happy with that and and feel confident that they can get the job done. And you said day after closing or uh, day of? Day of. And I, I was looking at the contract today, and I thought that December the 15th myself, I thought that was a little bit. Yeah, well, I moved it out because we didn't know how much time we were going to need to get approval. So, and that might be too far out for the um, ECT to get, you know, to get their work done too. And they're ready to start the day we close. So. <coughs> and we can include in the motion that we can just basically close as long if if we approve the contract and, and obviously they then sign it, we can move forward with closing. A second motion as far as authorization to sign closing documents as well as the, the contract and closing documents so we can just move ahead 
on the closing. Okay. Um, I, I want to uh, say one thing now. Um, it says right in here, uh, sellers shall provide for the demolition, removal, and disposal of all structural and other improvements currently located on the property, with the exception of any improvements identified by the buyer to remain in place. And uh, we have a, we, the city has a use for the uh, freestanding white shed that's sitting on Marine Street that has the uh, no trespassing signs on it. So the Streets and Roads Department will be, as soon as we can, we, we're finished, as soon as it's legal, uh, Dan lets, lets us know, that they'll, be, they'll be moving that off there. So the city will pay for that to be removed? Yes, that will be, uh, that will be uh, taken away. And, um, Unless, Ms. Uh, Susan, do you have anything that we need to say that needs to remain, like light poles or anything like that? Yes, I don't think there's much on there, so I think. Susan, do you, and, and you decide that I know, have you had an opportunity to go out to that site and kind of kick around? Just if there's anything like below, like a below grade slabs or anything that would actually be okay to leave or for, for well, if they're going to pay over. Gonna be, it's better probably to go and have them take everything. Has, has everyone reviewed the agenda and the, and the contract? Um, I have some findings uh, that we have discussed, um, and, and I just want to say, you know, what I'm about to say, I say a lot of things a lot of times for the public record. Yep. And um, I, I want to uh, let the public know that uh, this property purchase of this property didn't happen overnight or last month, the, the agreement of it. It's been included on the agenda and discussed at most every CRA meeting for since uh, April of 2014. Even, even Mayor Messer discussed this uh, potential purchase. Um, it's been, the property has been advertised with signage for about two years on the, on the, uh, in the public, advertised to the public for purchase. Um, uh, in Florida Statute 163, Part 3, it clearly allows for a community redevelopment a late agency to purchase and demolish uh, blighted property, and that includes the deteriorating structures that lead to economic distress and anywhere where there's inadequate parking facilities or unsafe conditions or violations of Florida building code. So we, we have these things. And uh, I just want to say over the few years that I've been on the commission, I've received a lot of complaints and requests for removal of that particular property. You know, why doesn't the city do something? So now the city's doing something. And uh, it will help to alleviate the much needed problem for the Marine Street boat ramp parking, that, that we, we really need parking there. And uh, it, it will enhance our public boat ramp facility. Uh, this boat, major boat ramp facility was installed, really to me it appears, without future plans for parking and that was just left up to someone in the future to figure out and that's what we're doing now. There's a parking lot that's going to have low maintenance costs, low operating costs, and it's, it's, you know, it won't be like the facility that, uh, you know, like the Morehouse would have had, you know, major, major operating costs for the city and the CRA. Um, the design and the construction of the parking lot will coincide with the stormwater improvements and uh, paving project on Marine Street. And to get all of these major projects done at one time is going to reduce the overall cost of the parking lot and, and, and all the projects. And uh, construction and disruption will all happen at one time and make it a smooth transition for the major project that's about to go on there. So, um, Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, would you clear me up on the Kelsey Court area that is? Because I'm not familiar with that. I wrote that title. Let's see. Okay. Here's the deep one. 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 Here's the deep one.
portion where the two, this is Milliger's property and this is Milliger's property. This is uh, the old, um, what is that, uh, Wicked Wheel that's there. It will, and then there's another alley or roadway that comes this way. It will only be this portion that touches the Milliger property and the Milliger property. Okay. And will we need so, a plus? Uh, uh, I'm sure Wicked Wheel is in No, so. Which you will is here, it's here. Yeah, so it's up to the yeah, there's a uh, here you go. there's a something between yeah, uh, Mr. Watkins yeah. and Mr. Oh, oh, oh I got you. I said that. that's the time to be such here, you know, since so we'll just uh, Okay. That's so good. This okay. this is Melinda property and then this one is Melinda property. So it will be this section of Kelsey Court right here. Yeah, I knew it was this in here, but I wasn't the right time. Okay. Just that bottom. Now see, there's an alleyway here, and it will not extend north or, or south, or excuse me, east or south to that house. Okay. Yeah, so there's access to this property from here or here. So none of that's Very good, thank you. Well, we need to have a legal description of that. Um, we will attach to the rest of it. Okay. So this is Millinder property. This is Melinder property. This is Kelsey Court. This is an alleyway. So we're considering abandoning this much right here. That little spot out Not this way. You understand what we're saying? Yes. You want me to say, show you what we're talking about to make sure we all. Well, it should start at Green Street and go up until the end of Melinder's property. Yes, yes, ma'am. of the 
commission members sitting on this board. So, so again, if, if they can obviously, we this is this we, we went around and around this because it's a yeah. chicken and egg. Yeah. Is typically an abandonment, a vacating of right away cannot be undone. So you, you really don't want to do it before you own the property. At the same time, the builders, you know, there's something in it for them too. I mean, they need to, they're trusting in the city to live up to our obligations and obviously that's part of your consideration at the next commission meeting that they lived up to theirs and, you know the city should live up to its unless there's an overriding reason not to. I, mean, I, I just think it's from our closing that with 45 days to get the demolition done so we can be in line with the, uh, the rest of the Marine Street project. Yep. Because that, that saves us a lot. Excuse me, Mr. Bo May made the motion that includes the factors that support the purchase price, and uh, Commissioner Cal Allen second that. Is there any more discussion? Is there any discussion from the public on this? Any discussion or comments? Okay. Um, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, uh. Uh, anyone opposed? Okay, then the motion carries. And then a second motion designating um, somebody on the board or the director to execute the contract and the closing documents in okay. connection with the purchase. All right, may I get a motion for that to designate some a board member to sign the contract and closing documents? Or, or the director. Or, or the director. The okay, time. or the director. Being Courtney. <laughs> I'll make the motion for the uh, CRA director to sign the documents. Okay. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. So we have a motion by uh, Mr. Powers for the director to sign the documents and seconded by Mr. Bo May. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Okay, then. Uh, motion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then the motion carries. Thank you. All right. And then I just want to ask uh, Ms. Susan McConnell with ECT to uh, <coughs> any uh, parking lot suggestions you have uh, for the drawings that we have. We have a preliminary here somewhere uh, to go ahead and communicate that with uh, Courtney, or you could show us now again. I have to and, bring some new ones. Okay. And I think it's a new ones because I don't think we have space dimensions on the, the previous ones. All right. So that way we can just kind of show how many spaces they are, the length that they are, so everybody will kind of just have an idea. Because we did add some extra smaller spaces for vehicles <coughs> that for kayaks, you know, and everything. So. <laughs> so she said she added smaller, some extra spaces, smaller spaces for uh, just uh, vehicles, single vehicles with kayaks on top of them or something. So, um, wow. Okay, so we do have, as it stands right now, 46 spaces. Um, there is 27 45 foot long spaces. There's two that are from 40 to 45, and it kind of comes down, goes down from there. So try to uh, you know, maximize the space as best as we could and we will still have some little spaces on the end that we can add for some street lighting because I know it was mentioned it's pretty still dark down there so we'll come in with some you know new lighting that we can come on each end of there so okay right now there's a couple of power poles okay. that are on that property that are connected do they need to be left when they do the demolition when you need that that 
service line for your the service line we'd probably like to keep in there. I'll, when we leave here, I'll go look to see where they're kind of where they fall to. But definitely we'll keep that service line. And especially since we're going to be moving one of those poles, the dead poles along Marine Street, we might, we might be able to kind of tie everything in. So, so if you could just come up with a list of sure. anything needs to remain. I know we just throw them aside right. today. <laughs> but take your time and you take okay. a week or two to just dig through that site and see what right. a board right. goes on. Are they, they're not, are they the poles that match Marine Street? And I don't think we can do anything fancy, just regular street lights. Okay. Okay. It's just so expensive to repair those. Right. So whatever. Uh, I want y'all to please notice now that um, this Avenue F, we're proposing to uh, turn that into a one-way street headed east. And right now, it's basically a one-way street whenever vehicles are parked in that parallel parking there's really just, yeah, it's pretty much a one-way street anyway. So I just want y'all to be aware of that. Uh, um, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, this has got, this one of those pieces of paper has gotten better. Yeah, it's 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 right. it's We're sometimes trying. it gets worse. But this one has got more spaces and you can load it all from the right to the left. Well, it's really ease of getting in and out. Yeah. The trailers are getting longer, you know, and so. I've got a problem, and I brought this up before, that this, um, and coming from here, there's a stop sign, but, and I come this way to my house, and at least two times a week, these people run this sign, don't slow down. There needs to be some kind of either a made across there or some bumps. Okay. Because one of these days, uh, something's going to happen there. And so if you can put that into whoever, that may be DOT or whoever. No, that would be part of our Marine Street. paving <coughs> all of yeah. this Marine Street, or we could add it when we do the, the, um, yeah. the stop. Is there a stop sign there? There is there a stop sign there. Uh -huh. and, 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 Every time I come by there, I point at it when they nearly hit me. And, uh, you know, you so, in the way, a white stripe. So, so I stopped it's turned sideways right now. Okay. So people are so, cut in that corner. Okay. Right. Um, right. I'll look at that too. But if you do that, that uh, you know, if you could just a little, just a little <laughs> things in there and at least let them know that something's happening. Right. Okay. And, and Commissioner Allen, keep an eye on it and keep us up. Oh. Uh, don't remind us, please, sir. Sure We've got a lot of things on our minds, so <laughs> keep us in, in line there. One other thing I'm just talking about on Avenue F here, mm -hmm. it's a 60 foot right of way, and while they're out there paving and doing their thing here, is there any, I just don't know as far as the survey when he's looking at, doesn't show it, but on this side of the road, if there was any room for additional parking on that there side? Is that, there is the shoulder that's there. Yeah, maybe even if, it's just, even if it's just for cars mm -hmm. or right. golf carts or mm -hmm. kayaks or something like that, that, maybe to add that in that way while they're out there doing all the other work, they can still have some great that. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a, some right of way easement there. Right, except the, the property line is probably right there, so there would be. There could be more. It's a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, one other thing about that this yellow line stops here. Uh, it would be helpful if that line could take it all down the Marine Street to show that that was the the main. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, so this part I think is DOT. Correct. Yeah. I think is the. Yeah. yeah. All you do is just have to connect to it and get the uh, power uh -huh. the Is that part of 30A, Courtney? Is that uh, curve there? Is that part of 30A? I know uh, that's. And, and we've studied this yeah. before. And I think they're, I'm thinking Dan's right, 38 ends further up over there. We're the, dealing with it in another matter. I think it at, ends there where Avenue F begins. <coughs> right back there. There's where everything comes Yes, back in here. Okay. Uh, along 5th Street area, okay. but maybe a little uh, west of that. I think the curve's still considered Marine Street. Okay. And so is the straight line. We can ask the, um, when they go to UK, they yeah. can ask the about so, uh, yeah. What is this street called right into your Some maps say, all maps say Marine Street. It's still Marine Street. Okay. Okay. 
Well, that would make sense to just bring a yellow line around the street. That's right. That way the people would know. Because then you'd have to cross the yellow line. Right. That might get an extra last year. Right. Get better turn. All right, is, the, is that it then? I think so. Okay, all right, well, we'll move right along, and that was quite a uh, city attorney report. Do you have anything else, Mr. Hartman? Nothing else. Okay, thank you. Now we'll uh, finally come to public comments. Uh, are there any public comments? Okay, Ms. Ms. Saunders. My name is Christina Saunders, and I noticed the city is starting to rent billboard signs. I noticed as you're coming in from the east that there's one on the right-hand side of the road. And we have an 8 by 20 billboard after you cross the Carrollville Bridge on the west side of the road across from the Carrollville Boat Club. The uh, billboard is located in the city, and it is a lighted sign. It's an 8 by 20. And we have the Carabella Lighthouse that's been renting from us for quite a few years. And I was going to offer it to the city if they were interested. I rent it for $200 a month, which would be $2,400 a year, plus if you have to pay sales tax. And it is 8 by 20, and it does light up at night. And you would be on the west side as you're coming east. <clears throat> By far the best billboard. The best price. I don't know about the price. I don't know about the price. I know it's a good bill. Yes. 8 by 20 wraparound. Uh, you know, we have a gentleman that hangs for us. Uh, and then all the city would need to do would be have the sign made up. Well, I, I, I believe that we, I mean, this is a good offer. I appreciate it. We need to um, possibly, I would say, investigate what a sign what the signage would cost yeah. for there because we know we've we've discussed the sign that we the one sign we only have one sign. Right, I noticed that yeah. we were and, out of town and I yeah. came back and, and saw and that. that one is kind of out of town and, and as you come then it's it, it, it kind of encompasses all of Carabelle. Um, it's not even though it's the CRA advertising it's not really leaving any of Carabelle out <coughs> something outside of on the outskirts of Carabelle. But we we may want to redo that sign. I think we have discussed that briefly. Maybe after the first of the year, we'll put that on the agenda and see. You know, I think it's kind of been described as a bad bear day. <laughs> so um, we, we can take a look at this at the same time and see what signage would cost. Or we have uh, gotten a price in the past. You know, we're not real happy with the sign we have now. I mean, the billboard, we, we've got that lease, but the actual signage, I think we, we really were not happy with it. And to get it replaced, probably with something we would be happy with, it looks like it's going to be around $2,000. So we'll need to, you know, maybe talk to a couple of folks and see what they might charge for signage like that. Well, the, the billboard that I have is we'd be putting up a bonnet sign uh, and a wraparound that is hung by hangers. And because we have we have a sign up there, and we paid I think like three hundred dollars to have that made. And then uh, the man hangs it, and he's around two hundred dollars. So that's what you would have invested in the sign. And it is you know before you get into the city of Carabelle, it's uh, across the street from the boat club. Yeah, I, I went out. Uh, I've seen it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a nice sign. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for letting us Thank know you. about it very much okay is there any more discussion on that okay mr mr frank please come forward thank you this isn't uh, on that subject were you finished with yes, it okay i got about i could use about another six inches you can lean over my name is Skip Frank. I just want to uh, thank the CRA board, number one, for getting this parking project going. As, as a frequent user of Marine Street, I appreciate it very much. Looking forward to it. Uh, a, a suggestion slash reminder. During this long process, and I don't remember exactly when, somebody brought up getting some sort of income from the parking. I just want to remember 
uh, and it was brought up, a card reader, and everybody's got credit cards these days, and 10 bucks a hit is not, is not bad. Time what, 45 parking spaces, is it? 47? 46. Whatever. You know, better part of 500 bucks a day, potential. We could use it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We appreciate it, and keep reminding us of that as well, and thank you for reminding us, because I wanted to uh, ask ECT to include in the parking lot somewhere a uh, place for signage that will say the whatever guidelines or rules that we have for the parking lot. I think we're not going to figure that out today. And then also, I believe, is it, is it called an iron policeman? Is that what that's called? Uh, where you pay on the honor system similar to, the, yeah. So I don't know if we're going to do that. I can't say, predict that right now. But a, a spot in the event we do something like that. Uh, uh, obviously, <coughs> obviously, the, the uh, policing of these parking spaces will have to, to follow. The people park, die, oh, they yes. not Skip, I, I agree about uh, trying to make this a, a, an income producing. Uh, I think we avoided that conversation a lot because we might have still been talking about that portion of the, the you know, mm -hmm. we were talking about the donkey, not the car. Uh, but now I, I do understand, I don't know it for a fact, maybe Courtney does, that uh, the city of Appalachia has parking for a boat ramp somewhere and they charge um, folks from out of the county. But I, I would have to research that, so we're, we're not going to make any decisions today. And I don't know if that would, something like that would go before the commission. That's a good, good point, is if we're going to have law enforcement, we're going to have the police enforce. Anybody else swing by there and, and do any enforcement, then I think it will have a help in the city. Because that's, you know, the CRA property. I think once it's purchased, it becomes a city project until that, yeah. that would be my thing. It's a CRA project. It would still be a CRA project, but what it could be, then we'll, we'll deal with it yeah. in our next yeah. Okay. Or the next. Is there any more public comment? Okay, then we're going to move on to new business. Finally, Mr. Russell. Um, He's going to uh, tell us about the task order to engineer um, Northwest Avenue B. Now, we just completed Southeast Avenue B. <coughs> this is Northwest Avenue B. Right. Uh, there has to be actually three projects um, in, within this task order. One is Northwest Avenue B. That's from Northwest 11th Street to Northwest 3rd Street. Um, also along that corridor, if you remember, um, we had identified some turning radiuses there that were insufficient and vehicles, uh, delivery trucks and such were tracking off of the roadway, so we would increase those radiuses. Um, also included in this task order is parking on uh, Northwest 8th Street uh, in between the Fisherman's Wife and um, the IGA and also paving um, the Old Street parking at IGA, and that's along North, Northwest 7th Street. So those are, those are the three projects in this task order. Okay, so the reason that this is a little bit different than the way we operated with uh, Inovia on Southeast Avenue B in front of the <coughs> History Museum is that you, you conducted the entire project and you um, incorporated your engineering fees in with the project and in with the fees for the um, pavers and uh, asphalt folks. All of that was incorporated into one project is the way I, you presented a quote and that was everything was in it. Now this time we'll have two separate co quotes because the city is, or, and the CRA, the CRA is piggybacking with county project and county paving. So you will be working with a county contracted Asphalt. Is that right? Am I explaining that correct? Um, I, I'm not 100% certain of that. Um, and the, the timing of the county's project um, may or may not coincide with this project. Um, uh, that work is being bid separately. So, um, and I, I believe the bids on that are due November the 3rd. Yes. So that, that's really going to be too soon unless that's delayed. 
that's going to be too soon to bid these projects with it. Um, now we've we've got to produce engineering plans, contract documents, uh, quantities in order for the contractor to be able to bid on that project. And 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 by the way, I don't I don't want to. Uh, uh, go further without mentioning that the Avenue B, the fees were separate. Um, the engineering fees was a separate contract contract from the construction. So we produced the engineering plans um, and uh, let's see, it. I believe we had a change order for the contractor um, as part of the landscape project which he bid. So we coordinated that change order with the contractor. So that so our fee, our fee was right. Our fee was separate from the contractor's okay. fee. All right. And okay. It, it would be the same in this case. Okay. So in this case, then, but but you, we are we are this particular paving on Northwest Avenue B and the turning radiuses and all. This will be the part that the paving. This project is being piggybacked with the county's projects, right? Now I understand that I know that Northwest Avenue B is on that county's. On the county's list. Is, am, am I correct on that? Um, and we're supposed I'm to be okay. Okay. We're supposed to be getting the the rate uh, for the asphalt, same rate. Okay. Uh, on this, okay. as as uh, the rest of the city projects, this county district projects that will be going on at the okay. same time. All right. We'll coordinate. It. We will coordinate it that well. way. I we'll, we'll make sure it's coordinated I'm, that way. Have you not been? coordinating this project with yes, Clay I can, and with the others? Sorry. Yes, I communicated with Clay and he that's when he, he, he advised us that this would be that there would be opening bids on November the third. Okay. For that I've work. Got to go. And that, that is and, right and I did provide I did provide him with all this information. Okay, so even with the uh, turning radius and the uh, uh, extra on street parking and the two uh, businesses there you provided him with that? I did. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll follow up and make sure there's not an issue with that and let you know. If you want, yeah, and I'll I'm going to be going there on November the 3rd too. Okay. Because we have a lot of projects involved. Sure. There. Okay. So, uh, do we need a, should we have a, a motion then to uh, approve or disapprove this task order or no yet? To, or is it, is it? So, I mean, it, it can't hurt. <laughs> can't hurt if, if there's any, if there's any, uh, <laughs> now, what happens if we don't like the price that comes back from the county? <laughs> then we'll do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Aren't we? We're going to pay it anyway. <laughs> we made we the motion. Is it? Our home rule powers. That's, that was my understanding. Yeah, we've made the motion that the project's going to be done, so we motion for the project. So, uh, then can I get a motion, please, then, for to uh, approve or? Uh, disapprove Anovia's task order for engineering on this uh, at Northwest Avenue B uh, and then including the turn radiuses on east and west corners of uh, 8th and 9th Street and then the uh, on street parking at Fisherman's Wife and on street parking at IGA. That's about a half block each on those. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, wait. You Okay, so Mr. Bo uh, May makes the motion. Uh, can I have a second, please? I'll second. All right, and Mr. Callow in a second. Is there any discussion? I hope the county's got a good price that we get. <laughs> any Thank discussion? You. Okay. Uh, all approved? Uh, okay, and any opposed? Okay, so the motion passes. All right. Um, now, Mr. Canterbury. We're going to review your uh, facade grant application. I did, uh, as per request, bring some parts of torn from my okay. submitted artist. I did want to make a note, everybody to note on this. I didn't get one for everybody. All of this art is on building, right? So she is a commercial artist. Uh, it may not, you can see, certainly see it on a couple of them where you see that it's actually on the building. All of the art is actually on the building, and that's the kind of work that she does. Again, it's very difficult to find a, there's a lot of artists, but most of them are commercial artists that are not bothered in art uh, and whatnot. I think okay. you can see that she does very nice work. And um, I, I think it'll be an asset to my building, uh, to the 
property. The guy's got a problem there with with people just not really understanding what they are. They come in looking for ding dongs and ho hos and, and all kinds of stuff. And anything that I can do to brand myself better is going to be an asset to my business and consequently an asset to the community. I think I think everybody uh, certainly wants me to be successful down there. Uh, we did have a good year, and uh, I'm appreciative of the opportunity to, to get into some funds to help me. Uh, you did bring up a point I wanted to thank you personally. Um, actually, I had no idea what you were talking about when you were talking about that alley. And so uh, I'm still moving forward with the purchase. We did pull back to do a complete survey. I did commission the survey okay. uh, because I, I the people that owned the property didn't seem to understand that there was an actual caravel. There is an there is an, an alley there, and there is an easement as well. Mm -hmm. And so I, I so I certainly was not going to move forward with the purchase until I don't think that it's anything that's going to keep me from purchasing the property. Uh, I would actually suspect that this is probably not the forum for it now. I would suspect that at some point in time that Caravel might be willing to either A, you know, sign that over or B, sell that to me at some point in time. So I don't think that it's, uh, that it's anything that's, that's been used for decades. I could be wrong, but it certainly is a public access. And I was made aware of that through your uh, protestations the other day. So thank you for that. that, 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 that. <laughs> All right. Well, it, it looks good. Uh, I went by and, and took a look at it most every day, and everything is, you know, cleaned up. A couple of little items that kind of irritated me were <laughs> cleaned up, <laughs> but uh, it looks good. Well, again, and moving you, forward, yeah. actually, you're going to find me somebody that very much wants a very presentable. Uh, I, again, I think I intimated the last time that I was a little behind the eight ball this year. And now that things are slowing down, we're able to get to some of the things we want to do. And then being shut down for this winter, I am closing this winter. That was part of my original lease with these people, that I'll have that ability to, to do all of this work during that time period. Okay. I know that there are some time restrictions on there, but it actually works out pretty well for me because we're closing the doors on November 8th. And that would be that I would immediately be able to move directly into to start to work on on the uh, the stuff that I'm getting to see. All right. All right. Now, once you get that, uh, you have uh, 30 days to to, to start. To right. start. Well, yes. exactly. Today is the 13th. That's what I was saying about okay. the the, the, right. the timing is very good. That okay. I close on the 8th, which would be a Sunday, and then I can immediately have workers starting there on that that okay. next couple of days. Or and and you mentioned that you know you wanted to have a Class A business and and. It's looking that way, and I look forward to it remaining that way uh, as it's looking and today. And I assure you, it will. Uh, so uh, uh, do we want to move forward then and, and get a motion for this facade grant? Does someone want to make a motion on that? Approval for Forgotten Coast Paddle. Uh, Forgotten oh, Sports. Sports. Forgotten Coast Paddle Sports. And may I have a second? I will second it. And Mr. Rob Powell seconds that. Uh, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion from the audience? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, so the motion passes then. All right. And you'll Thank you so move much. Forward. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And so now we'll move on to ongoing projects follow-up, and we'll have Mr. Russell Large again to come back and uh, review the uh, Southeast Avenue B project that looks like it's complete now. Uh, thank you. The uh, paving operations are, are complete. There were some uh, punch list items. Yeah, I'll go through those real quick. Um, once there was a, there was a sump area at the intersection of Avenue A and 1st Street. That's kind of behind the express lane. Um, so we were expecting that uh, area to be overlaid with asphalt. Um, at this time, that has not been done, so we'll follow up with the contractor on that. Uh, he indicated that he would do so. 
Uh, second is the embankment uh, cut along the pavement edge in that same area. That area has been paved. I'm sorry, that area has been sodded. Uh, so that, that's complete. Um, also, there were uh, damage to curb and some irrigation heads, or at least one irrigation head that has been repaired. Uh, the curb has also been repaired. We um, inspected that today. So that, those things are complete. Um, lastly is the issue of the final striping. We've had some conversations with uh, staff and also with uh, members of the public on that. Um, there has been uh, some dialogue um, and I'm, I'm happy to share that with you uh, if it's a pleasure of the board. Also, I, I think it was indicated that Ms. Oxenon would be here and would want to uh, address this as well. So uh, whatever the pleasure is of the board on that, um, we've, we have exhibits that we can talk to. Okay. Um, so, uh, All right. But I just want to ask one question before we get real involved in this one. Um, did we get to check the irrigation head? Do we know is that repaired? We'll check that later. I haven't been down there to check oh, it. Oh. But we'll, William's going to turn the water on. And make sure it's got, that's, uh, that's good. So okay. Ms. Oxendine uh, sent me a, a text last night, and she's in Tallahassee, cannot be here today. Uh, but uh, I'll just briefly uh, say, you know, that she, so that she is represented. Uh, she is, says she's not happy with the project looking for my notes. She says there's not any parking in that area. She sent me just, you know, countless emails and I didn't print them all out. Um, uh, she said the thrift store needs parking, uh, certified public accountant needs parking, the museum, the barbershop, the art gallery, and then the white kitchen opens. Um, she says that there's wasted space between the parking paved spaces. And she says she's not happy with this. Um, she, um, she wants to know why they didn't paint a handicap in front of her shop, I guess, a handicap space in front of her shop. Um, she thinks the speed limit is going to be abused. She wants to know, Ms. Oxidine wants to know if this can be a one-way street. And I, I know that uh, she wanted to know how many parking spaces were in the beginning. I, I wrote her back a, a good bit, and then, and then uh, Mr. Large wrote um, quite, a, quite a good bit to her as well. Um, there were 15 spark parking places to begin with, and now there's 14 parking places same area. Uh, no, no, there's 12 okay. plus, plus two handicaps. 14. 14. Okay. And we had handicap before in there. That's true. As well. Okay. And then uh, I, I will have Mr. Cal, Commissioner Allen, speak on this as well because his shop there is there. Okay. The, the two ramps that are for handicap accessibility are in the parking space themselves. So a person in the car, if they were going to use a wheelchair, wouldn't be able to access those ramps and it would be blocking those ramps for anybody else parking somewhere else so and i don't know the solution to that but uh, i know uh, tamra brought this to my attention that, it, that she either has to go back up the white kitchen to get to the museum or go down to uh, uh, the accounting office or, or the, the uh, marathon come in from that side right and par parallel parking is difficult to deal with in terms of handicap spaces but those ramps should not be blocked, and uh, in, in the final configuration, they would not be. So some of the striping that was, uh, the temporary striping that was put down was not part of the plan, so that's gonna have to be corrected. Um, so we'll make sure that those ramps are indeed open and okay. able to be used. How, how was that before? Was it? The same way. As it is now? Mm -hmm. Well, no, you could park and leave the ramp open in front oh. of the museum. There was an open space there, and then the other the other part is when started just after the ramp. That's right. That's right. Now at the gallery, it, was, it, it wasn't that's that's the way it's always been there. The way it is now, is the right in front of the door, and so if someone's parked in that ramp, there's no access there. Okay. 
And then was there a, uh, there's a handicap sign in front of the cut and snip shop. Mm -hmm. Was that a handicap parking space as well? Or I mean, they I had know. one there. Yes. Uh -huh. There, I, I did speak with her. Um, uh, she didn't bring that up in my discussions with her, but I believe there are two handicap parking spaces on that side. Um, and both in our in the final plan, mm -hmm. right? And, and in the final configuration, they would not. Okay. Well, just to provide a little um, additional explanation, um, you may remember, you may or may not remember that um, we had uh, some complaints from the public about parking on Marine Street and vehicles um, hanging out on the road, blocking the road. So um, we had that in mind when we looked at this project as well. And the same condition existed here. So the way we dealt with that was to convert those very short angle of parking, which actually did result in uh, trucks and cars hanging out on the road. <coughs> so we converted those to parallel spaces. It did result in a loss of four spaces, which, which I think, I think we, or three spaces, which I think we discussed. Um, but that was our approach, to make sure that we provided clear three lane, two lanes worth of traffic here. Um, just to give you an idea of what the uh, regulation angle parking spaces would look like, this line represents the, the through travel lane. So it's clear, clearly in conflict here with the, with the travel lanes. And this, this is, um, it does exist today. This road is not as busy as Marine Street. Um, I don't know if you have received complaints, but we didn't want to put something back that was not standard. It was not an acceptable standard. So that, that's the reason that it was done that way. Um, an option we contemplated was to eliminate parallel parking on the north side of the road and install only angle parking on the south side and provide two, three lanes. That, that, that's an option uh, for your consideration. It, it's making that a one one way street would be one of some option like I suppose it would be. In fact, um, Ms. Oxidine uh, made sure we knew that Marine Street used to be one way. It is one way, actually. In, in, in actuality, Marine Street is a one way street from the corner of Avenue B past Harry's for at least 50 yards. At any time between 4 in the afternoon and 8 at night. Yeah, effectively, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be one way going east. This would be, you know, to decide if we're going to make it a one-way street. That was the difference. Um, yeah, it, it, this is a separate issue. And just as this one, we uh, uh, down here where the boat ramp is, we have discussed that and discussed that and discussed traffic flow patterns and how they would go out. And, and Fifth Street is <coughs> Fifth Street that's over here. That's about to be paved. So they could go out down Fifth Street. But if we What's were to make this a one-way street here in front of the museum and all along off of Highway 98, then we would have to consider traffic flow patterns along Marine well, Street. Coming off of 98 and going down, you'd have to go down to Marine Street and come back That's around right. and come in. Well, That's you'd right. have to consider taking the whole a plan traffic right. flow pattern for all of Marine Street, Avenue mm -hmm. B and C and E, the, a whole traffic flow plan. Well, I wasn't you know, suggesting I was that. I was just getting comparable and then it's been um, that also changes the pattern going into the marathon because a lot of people come in on B Street and then turn right into the marathon if that happens then they're going to have to go and pull off 98 directly in the marathon so and then you would also have to consider what may happen with the Georgian hotel in the future I mean that it is not going to be uh, what it is forever. That's, and then also there has been a lot of uh, discussion and contemplation about the Sonola property that's pretty much there at the end uh, on River Road uh, down to the south just a little bit, uh, about a quarter of a block. Where the, we all know what the Sonola property is, mm -hmm. don't we? The uh, brick building there on, on Marine Street on the water side. There's 
people want that to be commercial dockage. Now, if you have commercial dockage there, you may have large trucks coming and going, and how would they get in and out of that area? I don't see that could be a one-way street. I don't think that's really one of the answers to that. I was just comparing. And then we have a we business have owner here. Well, we have two business owners here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Callahan has a business on that street, and then uh, Mr. Christie, if you would like to speak to that as well, uh, if you're interested, you don't have to. Yeah, with regards to parking or, or more? I'll, like well, uh, <laughs> well, we'll be discussing the layout of the parking uh, on Marine Street shortly, whenever that painting is completed. But uh, do you, you know, is there, do you have something you'd like to speak to of the parallel parking here on Avenue B? You don't have to now. <laughs> uh, no, I, I do have some thoughts, oh, but okay. I'm Louis Christie on uh, Christie's Cottage Living, 208 Marine Street. And um, I, I know for a fact it's very dangerous in front of our store for the way we have the parking set up now, the angle parking. I have a big truck, and on certain days I park my truck there to unload it, especially days that were closed, and uh, which is Monday and Tuesdays. And uh, I mean, it's a big truck, and people trying to park over by the pharmacy to back out. It's all the time that I'm not the only one that parks there, but but anybody on the other side backing up. They can't see anything that's coming down the road, and there's almost an accident every day right there in front of our, our store. And if you go back to parallel parking, we we'll lose parking spaces. And I don't necessarily want to see that to be a one-way street either way. Head toward the, the ramp or coming back from the ramp. I like the truck direction traffic uh, flow right. To see people restricted, don't we have to come one direction? They came off of Marine Street and with their trailers to head that direction. Well, how are they going to park then? How are they park at all to, to come to our stores? And so I, I, I recognize there's a lot of issues there and concerns, and I want to have as much parking as available <coughs> as possible. Um, we, we are doing pretty well, and I hate to think that our customers coming there wouldn't have a place to park. And so I don't want to lose parking spaces, but the street right now as it's configured with the annual parking is dangerous and it restricts the flow of traffic to have dual lanes of traffic if you have somebody parallel parked on the other side. Uh, where the old barber shop is and those few places, spaces, um, it, it's a hazard. So, I don't know what it was like before we got there, but I uh, know that the street has been built up quite high our neighbor at the White Kitchen was doing some re reworking of the garden area in front of his, his I think he took out some of the, the trees that were there and helped him put in a couple of palm trees or something. And in that process of digging that out, he, he, he said there's two drainage areas on the street underneath that, that 12 to 18 inches below the current level of the street. So that street over the decades has been built up a foot or more, and um, so that's an issue I would like. I don't know if you want to discuss we'll that now. Discuss that later, but, sure. but okay. okay. But that's my opinions on the parking and the direction of the floor. Right, so, <coughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Have you got another one of those, Russell? Uh, yeah, plenty. <laughs> another flip. Oh, sorry, no, that's two. That's the last, that's last one. one. But um. One, excuse me, before yes. we go to that, one thing I was going to say a while ago, we, that alley that comes right down the side of our building between us and the cliff joint, right. uh, is one of those spaces there for that alleyway? That, that, that's going to be blocked down so that alleyway uh -huh. is used. Okay. Yeah. That'll, that'll be a board out. Just right. take out. Okay. Um, the, the fact that this used to be a one way street or Marine Street in particular. Uh, kind of explains the, the why, it's, why it's not why not. In fact, you may remember we did some uh, work on Marine Street to uh, figure out how we could fit the uh, angle parking on there. It actually involves some widening. 
Um, but and that, that's a different type of project, and certainly more, more expensive. But that, that would be one solution. Is the striping, once you're done, when it comes off 98, will it continue down to Murray Street? Will there be some stripe? Yeah, there will be a single line stripe. Yes. It'll be, it won't indicate that it's a highway. It won't be like the double yellow. So it'll be what a white. It'll be it'll be yellow. It'll be yellow. Yes. Okay. Good. I I like that market myself the way it is because it makes the street look really inviting. There's plenty of uh, ways to you can see. It looks good too when you're right there at 98. You got a choice. You can see the river. See the river. It's it's. It is inviting, and we have our new enhanced uh, triangle park right there. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that there was at one time a speed limit sign on, by Triangle Park, but we could certainly put a speed limit sign. I think it's 25 there on that road. So that can be done. I I, I do agree that we need more parking downtown for all of us. We have to add something that we have to address some way about what various options we have to acquire or create more parking. But making putting more park two more parking spaces on this road, I don't think. Would, would warrant widening that. Uh, no. okay. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. The hotel, is that in the CRA district? Yes. Trucks we got today, they ain't twice as long as the old cars. 
All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll move forward, and uh, we're, uh, you'll stay up here, or you may have to regroup, uh, but you'll be talking to us now about the crosswalk there at on Highway 98 at Veterans Park, uh, item number two, under ongoing projects. Okay, on the 4th Street boat ramp, um, uh, we have developed uh, plans. Uh, we're ready to make the submittal to the department. Um, one issue that was outstanding was a uh, cost estimate, a, re a revised cost estimate. So we, we've done that. Um, and our cost estimate, including a 15% contingency amount, is $28,000. So. Uh, I'm not sure what you had uh, budgeted for that, but um, uh, I think a budget number of thirty thousand would would uh, would cover this construction. Now, this this includes the uh, mid-block crossing, the signage that goes with it. There's also sidewalk construction that connects to the Fourth Street boat ramp project, <coughs> and then um, sidewalk construction on. Uh, uh, forgive me, as that Avenue A, that's on the north side of the triangle area. Here, I'll pass out this exhibit. Construction agreement with the department, and we've also we've prepared that agreement, um, and it's it's ready for Courtney's signature. And once that once we have that, we'll be ready to submit to the department. Does it does it appear is the DOT going to agree with this construction agreement? Are they going to uh, allow this? Um, the indication is that they would. Uh, there's uh, they do have to review it. They may have some comments which we'll need to address, but. Um, we have done everything they've asked us to do. Mm -hmm. um, you may recall there was a, uh, the department did, did ask for a pedestrian refuge in the middle of the road, mm -hmm. which the city was uh, opposed to, so we, we did bring that back up with them. They agreed to eliminate that requirement. Um, so that, and that's what this drawing represents. All right, and then you're going to put a, a crosswalk on, um is that Avenue A across there? Yeah, I believe that's Avenue A. All right. And that is a street, um, city, city street. street. We don't need DOT no. involvement there. Correct. And then a sidewalk going, just a partial sidewalk, half block sidewalk there. Yes, and, and, and that will connect to the existing sidewalk on 4th Street. Okay. And I think there may be a driveway there. There know. is, okay. and uh, you, you may see the two lines there. Yes. That, that is... Um, uh, a blocked out for the driveway and that, that uh, concrete there will be six inches okay. thick to accommodate their driveway. Right. Is this going to be the sidewalk, is it going to be the same width as the existing sidewalks that are downtown? I know the... Six, it'll be six feet wide. Okay. Is that the same width as... Yes. The, okay. Uh, it seems like the sidewalk that was uh, done on uh, the 12th Street connector on Northwest Avenue B down to 13th Street, it seemed like that was a little bit. It's a nice sidewalk. It's beautiful, but it just seems like it was a little bigger than, than our normal walks. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. 
So what do you all think? Do you want uh, Mr. Large to move forward with this? I think we did a, a, about the compromise point that we're going to be able to get to. So, I mean, they, they've given up the number of people that have to cross the street. They, they don't make us put a thing in the middle of the road anymore. I'm really, I'm impressed that somebody's made this much um, follow through with TDOT because they threw a lot of stuff up in our way. F dot. F dot. I'm sorry. I'm a Tennessee boy. You know? okay. uh, Janelle, I realize here looking at this that you can now walk down Highway 98 to Veterans Park and cross on a crosswalk to the water side of the street or back up to the other sidewalk in a place that's designated as a place to do that and not get to the end of the Veterans Park and wonder how the heck you're going to get that's right. Where you got to go. That's right. Do y'all want to? Does any? Does anyone in the public want to see this? Yeah. Nope. Nobody's going to ride on your Just Take that and then give it to me. Stay away back there. That's good. And then it's now, do you have this is Veterans yeah. Park here? Okay. All right. And and over here now on the Fourth Street boat ramp, we have scheduled a sidewalk to go down to the bottom of the Fourth Street boat ramp. Okay. It's the clearest I've seen that, that whether it just goes to the 4th Street boat ramp or gets a pedestrian to the other side of the street. If you're just a walker and you want to walk down there and then cross over, you've got a place to do it. Right. On those areas. Right. Uh, safe place. Even though that white area is not really a sidewalk, is it? Not there. Not really. Uh, no. People walk in. On the south side of the road. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, do, do we want to move forward then? Uh, do we need a motion, uh, Mr. Dan, for uh, Russell to move forward on this, or we have we, we motion this project is budgeted. So, uh, I think we'll I think you can move forward. Have, forward. Sure. have uh, Courtney sign the the uh, DOT agreement, kind of whatever it is there that you need. <coughs> All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And then we're going to move forward with the uh, Fourth Street boat ramp upgrades uh, from environmental consulting technology. That asked, I guess if Russell can still send me, I guess the final one approved. I will, approved. and so, I'd like yours too. Yeah, so that we can tie in the our sidewalk when, uh, for the Fourth Street boat ramp. To the side so right, we want it to uh, align. Right. Everything right. should align. That right. So good. Yes. Thank y'all for working together. <laughs> Um, we are we are still working on just getting the final agreement that for if it does have to be permitted, there is a statute that we don't think it has to be permitted. Um, so we're just clarifying that with DEP of the for of the four street pitch to extend the dock. Deck, okay. Right. And then we will have the bid specs um, to be, um, ready for you by the end of the month. So we can go ahead and get all that documents together and get that out get that out to bid them. Would it be possible to put a ladder on that dike? We extend the dock out to put a ladder to the water so if someone were in the water, they could climb up to the dock. I mean, is that, is that part of the permit? I guess we, we can look at just that. Why, think, why do we want to do that? Because we got kids they swimming down. Off the dock. Well, there's kids <laughs> swimming down there all the time. And I said if you had a low tide, possibly, in other words, extending a little bit, maybe if a kayak. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of... Is that all right, Mr. Hartman? Can we put a ladder? Mm -hmm. we, we, we were just talking about this on another issue. Is, um, I mean, again, is the ladder for... I know we're talking about, obviously, the children. We're talking about yeah. bike, people riding bikes off there and everything. Is kids will do what they do. We have skateboarders everything else. But we don't want to encourage it. Meaning, we certainly don't want to say we're installing a ladder so kids can... No, I didn't say that. So you get out of your kayak and get up. And yeah, I mean, if it's an adjunct to the, the recreational activities that are associated with the dock, we just don't want kids to get run over by boats coming in. Yeah, the next point. thing you have to do is either have a lifeguard or no lifeguard. Uh, I, I, yeah. I misspoke. I'm sorry. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we need the dock either first, then maybe I can check. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, um, but that's retractable. But that's pretty much where we're at with the 4th Street building. Okay, and, and your last uh, 
quote on it was uh, 62, somewhere around in there. Okay. All right. All right. Is there any other discussion on that uh, Fourth Street boat ramp? What's the estimated completion? French. I mean, is, is everyone, are we going to have be able to have vendors all up and down Marine Street? Are they going to be able to have Santa Claus under the pavilion? Right, the plan will be to button everything up so they have access. We're not going to try to block anything off for the festival. That's what the plan is. Because what they're going to start with first is that baffle box. Mm -hmm. First and get that in and get that all closed up. Then they can start with structure. So we can, and then North Florida asked what she is aware, they are aware of that. So they know the area, that whole area is going to be occupied. And the baffle box is in the, the big round area <coughs> now that's gravel pit by the, by the oh. uh, boat ramp. What'd you call it? It's a baffle box that's oh, by the pavilion. Oh, the, oh, the, the fire retention is over by the, that gravel Oh, that one. Okay, I'm right. sorry. I thought that had a baffle box yeah. under it as well. No, we, had, okay. Okay, we moved it over there by that. Oh. Like, so we can tie it into that existing storm drain. The, okay. <coughs> I use the microphone so the people in the back can wake up. Um, I thought that we were going to talk about this uh, a little bit more later, but we don't probably really have to. What we're doing with the uh, river, I mean, with the um, boat parade of lights at this point, is kind of watching how this process is going to go, so that we can make the decision how much of Marine Street to try to use or, or not try to use. Um, the um, the pavilion is a great place for judging the boats because they're at the starting line, basically. You know, they're all still wide awake and paying attention, if you know what I mean. And uh, it's, it's a good, you know, it's, it's a good flow. Um, we could just, just use the pavilion just for judges, uh, even with, you know, closed off highway construction, you know, and then um, potentially uh, the vendor part of things can all be contained pretty much in the, the B Avenue, uh, just within one block or so of that B Avenue and Marine Street intersection. You know, just a cluster right there. You don't necessarily, you know, need to do the 200 yard walk up and down Marine Street. Santa Claus will be there. Uh, vendors potentially will be there. So you know, we're just kind of waiting and watching how okay. this is going to, you know, pan out. All right, well, we'll, we'll let you know. I think that's a good idea. Sounds good. It's closer to the businesses um, downtown. So, all right, we'll. You know, if you have a question, you know, call call any of us, and we'll you know. And we can work like with coordinate you. closer too once it gets, yeah. you know, we'll look to see if and, it might be something. All right, and, and while you're there, Skip, I just wanted to remind you that uh, the CRA is uh, partnering with the chamber this year and, and funding the uh, fireworks. Good. So, okay, so then we want to talk to you about, and, and then Mr. Christie is interested in it as well. The um, Surfacing there, the sidewalk level in front of White Kitchen to the pharmacy. You know, we're, everybody's concerned about that now. And, and does a drain possibly need to be placed there where the asphalt meets the sidewalk? You know, we just don't want right. to push water down on the businesses. 
and, and we can look at that. Actually, we, uh, we looked at it online. I'm going to go look to see if there, because there's already a, uh, an inlet there. If there is an existing pipe that might be there, it would be easier. You know, we might just get it permitted a little bit easier. But we should be able. To, well, we can look at um, doing the design to put a new drain in there in front of those parking spaces, um, and then you get to capture that water at that, in that whole area. In that curb. Okay. You have to get a permit to send more water down. To, to DOT. Uh -huh. To DOT. <coughs> Oh, okay. Uh, uh, down there in front of Frank's Bait Shop. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can they? Can, can Susan move forward with that? Do you all know what we're yes. discussing? Yeah. 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 We're discussing yeah. there in front of the pharmacy. Uh, I walked that there. From White it, Kitchen. It, it, but we don't. If they put more asphalt, it's going to be repaved there. If they put more asphalt, we're afraid that uh, water. You know, we're just going to send rainwater straight down into. The, So um, we have, you know, still some CRA surplus. So we're okay for now. All right. Well, if there, if there were another way to get a train in there, get that in with the street in that area, would be great. Since we're going to be milling and resurfacing that that area, they could something could be done at that point. Because that water problem has to shut down several downtown businesses, and it's held back. Does that sound okay to you, Mr. Christie? Are, are we addressing your issues? Well, I, I, would, I would really like to see exactly what the drainage plan would be before we proceed with that. I mean, well, that's, that's what we're asking to do, to do a plan. I heard you say you're going to build some. There's absolutely no curb there at all. And when the water runs down north, coming down, around White Kitchen and that little garden area, the first thing that it does is flow back down toward the right. sidewalk. And that just tends to pool right there a little bit right. in front of where our store. Right, you can tell where they've been adding asphalt. Right, <laughs> right. It's right. getting added <laughs> yeah. on. So whatever you're milling, milling I, I, can you mill a little deeper? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Well, we don't want to do that. I was saying when I was up there before, when when Alan, well, my kid mm -hmm. was doing that gardening work, run a foot below is where he found right. the old drain. There's a drain grate right there. Right. And um, he says in the old pictures it showed us there were two steps to get up into the white kitchen from that way. Mm -hmm. Now there's a mm -hmm. half a step right. to get up there. So they've all already raised their way up. Right. And I, yeah, if, if nothing else, mill out enough put in like a French drain mm -hmm. that would run and a metal grate on top of right. it so that the, the drain would be covered. Right. Mm -hmm. So when she, when Ms. Susan returns with a conceptual design, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay, thank you so much. Maybe you guys come down to scout the location and to look at it, you can talk to the Mr. Christie and mm -hmm. any of us that Is there any more discussion then? The board members, the public? All right. Uh, do you do, were you able to speak with North Florida Asphalt yet? Or just kind of a little. She, she's going to meet the first week of construction, so that will okay. already be coming down there. So when they're mobilizing to the site, we can look at that one, because then then we can also look at any that are even in front of Christie's Cottage, and we can have a look at anything extra that might be okay. Added on the so uh, Miss Susan was going to have uh, North Florida Asphalt look at the alleyway that's running behind your shop and, and your shop in the pharmacy to kind of grade that down some and put pervious so that uh, grab it. So we won't have flooding out in the, the street there on 98. All right, so we thank you very much. Thank y'all for coming. Um, so down on item six, Courtney and I just kind of put together a list of how maybe these projects are going to go, uh, how they're going to be scheduled. Of course, it won't go exactly that way, but, you know, kind of just to give you an idea. 
Uh, we're, we're in the process of land acquisition at this point. Uh, Veterans Park, uh, a lot of you have seen the bricks already laid out. That's about to be done. Holiday lights have been ordered. They'll be hung. Extra, more holiday lights for this year. We'll have shorter, 10 more, I believe. So we'll have plenty of beautiful holiday lights this year. When are they going up? It's still early. We haven't even had Halloween. I know. I'm sorry. Right, thanks, David. We usually start after Thanksgiving. After, okay. Uh, and and, and since uh, they had a head, head, uh, head start on the holiday lights this year, we have all of them. Before Christmas. Yeah. <coughs> Last year, we were like the dollar store. They've already got Christmas decorations. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, then we're going to work on the 4th Street uh, boat ramp upgrades and the highway, the crosswalk across the 98. Hopefully that will come in all together. Uh, then in the winter time we'll be resurfacing uh, Northwest Avenue B and all the little uh, side streets or parking that goes with that. Uh, the Marine Street stormwater ret retrofit and the parking lot the, will go all together. Uh, then we'll re repair the alleyway there behind the, the businesses there between Avenue B and Highway 98. After all of that uh, repair is done and paving of Marine Street, uh, from one end to the other, then we'll uh, address the boardwalk, which was a project from last year, but we've decided that it's best not to do the new boardwalk there across from Harry's until all this other uh, major construction is going on. And after the major construction is finished, we're going to do some repairs to the pavilion and the waterfront dock, and uh, like I said, the uh, dangerous issues at the waterfront dock there uh, were addressed today and uh, so it, it should last uh, six to eight months until we can do major repairs. And um, we, I want you all to go down and take a look at the fish cleaning sink whenever you get a chance and maybe we'll put it on the uh, agenda next time or maybe wait until after the first of the year but we need to we need to figure out what we're going to do there. Do we need to see it with fish being cleaned? Uh, well, it's a health and sanitation issue. Bird droppings are everywhere. We know that. Um, fish scales, um, water usage. Um, the Once we get everything cleaned up and done on Marine Street, new parking, new docks, new everything, we're, we're going to have bird droppings still all over. <laughs> so we need to, something needs to be figured out. We're going to put a net. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And uh, just like the, so, uh, I just want you all to keep, the, keep that in the back of your head. head. So, does, uh, does the, do the board members have anything else they'd like to, to bring up? <coughs> no, just look for more uh, facade programs with, and with residences. Any other places where we can? Uh, anything else from the public? Uh, I talked to Mr. Robelock and he's interested in uh, going ahead and uh, getting an application for the paint of our building, of his building. And uh, uh, I talked with Chester about that, but that's as far as we've done. He's out of town now. So he'll, he'll fill out the application when we get everything done. Uh, is there any other comments from the public then? Okay. No one, nothing else from the board? May I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, second. Second. Okay. All approved. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Then we're adjourned. Thank you all very much.